Hello everyone, Dr. Tomko here. Haven't seen you in a little while. We've been um, trying to get set the best we could for this opening of the school year. So I do have an announcement today um, that I would like you all to listen to. It will be followed up with a summary and a small email. Um, and I'm speaking today to all of you um, as your superintendent, as a father and as someone who has now spent the re the last four months learning everything I possibly could about this disease, um, this virus, I'm sorry, the everything about safety precautions and everything we can do to say to you that even though we're going to do everything we can, um, we know that this is still a real thing out there. Um, and in saying that, we've worked very hard uh, to try to meet all the CDC recommendations and requirements to make sure everybody's safe. And I told you I'd be transparent as possible. And where we are at is in a difficult, unprecedented time for the simple fact that on August 21st, on August 21st, the CDC came out with some new recommendations and some new guidelines, which was a game changer for us. And I, and I think you're seeing that. Um, around the state now and even in New York City today, um, some of the recommendations for filtration and air systems have come at a time when some of these things that are being recommended just aren't possible overnight fixes. So in saying that, we want to make sure that we're being diligent. We want to make sure that we are listening to our faculty and staff. We want to make sure that we're able to provide the appropriate um, an appropriate assurance to all of you on social distancing, flow and entry, some of these things that we've been working on, uh, but more specifically, filtration needs. As our filters, our filtration systems are brand new, pursuant to specifications um, with regard to our referendum construction plan and the New Jersey Department of Education. However, don't forget, all of this, all of this was a consideration pre-COVID. Um, so one of the concerns now is how do we make sure that when we bring these students, these faculty and staff members back into our buildings, that we can give the best um, mechanical rating or filtration rating that we, we can. And over the past week and a half after the guidance from the CDC came out, we have been working with our faculty and staff, with our executive teams and everyone to see the best that we can do uh, and in trying to get some equipment that we need in time to open. So the only way we could possibly do this and make sure that it's it's going to be done in, a, uh, in an effectuate, effectuate change in a positive way is to do it in a phased opening, okay? So we are going to phase students in as we continue to make sure our rooms have these new filtration systems and we can assure appropriate social distancing. So that's been my decision now in working with the faculty and staffs. Uh, I know for some of you it's not going to be a popular decision. Unfortunately, it is what it is. And again, this guidance just came out very recently. Um, and although uh, our most of our um, talks have been with regard to compliance, we all know that the compliance issues are minimum issues, minimal issues, or minimum requirements. And we want to make sure the promise that the board, myself, um, have made to everyone here is that we're going to do everything we can um, in order to reopen uh, respectfully to the needs of everyone in our community. So in saying that, we still have a high population of students or parents who want their students to go in person. So we've made some adjustments to the schedule to make sure we can phase in in-person learning still in a hybrid, uh, in a hybrid model. Um, however, at the same time, we need to be very cognizant of how many rooms we can uh, make sure this filtration um, is correct in or make sure this filtration has even more of a recommended standard in and that's going to take us a little bit of time. So in doing that, um, the, the, the changes are as follows. September 8th being the first day of school, we're going to welcome to in-person instruction our pre-kindergarten students and our kindergarten students and students in special population areas, 
Those special areas, you will be um, notified by your principals or a special services director um, to, to discuss your um, return to school. Also on September 8th, the, the entire population at school one um, will be in, uh, in school as well. So the remote school will be in, in school one, uh, will happen on September 8th, okay? So that is the original opening day of school. We are going to phase the younger students in first, um, and they will go in a hybrid class. Everyone else on September 8th, everyone who is not in pre-K, K, and in a special population will be doing remote, remote learning from school. Now this will occur, there'll be more direction uh, for you over the next several days. This will occur with your children logging in at home just the way they would be here. So for example, if they have a class at eight o'clock, they would log into that Google, Google Classroom um, at eight o'clock and be taught synchronously. So whatever schedule they would have had, um, if they were in person, they will have now just in remote learning until they do come back in the phased uh, entrance. So then we move to uh, next week, September 14th. The following week, we'll, we will now then invite, we will still have those first populations in our buildings. And then we will invite the next three grade levels, grades one, two, and three. So on September 14th, um, we will expect cohort A to be in um, grades uh, pre-K, K, one, two, and three. All right, don't forget, we're still going with the cohorts A and B to make sure we maintain social distancing. So on the 14th, we see grades one, two, and three. Then on September 21st, we'll, we are going to invite grades four, five, and six. Again, with um, at that point, our entire um, elementary population will be in school. So within the first th uh, two and a half weeks, we'll have the entire elementary population back to in-person learning um, with the what we feel is an appropriate level of filtration for our air quality um, and social distancing. By that point, we'll be pros at all this um, so we can easily get back into the classrooms. Um, then on September 28th, the entire district will be in. That'll be middle school, high school, grades pre-K through 12. Again, this is not optimal. This is not what we we're planning for. Things were changing very rapidly. Um, I think as we got closer to opening, uh, I think there were, there were some, some factors involved, um, in making some of these changes. I, I know this, this is coming very late, but again, all this just happened soon. Uh, I think it's important to understand that the only reason why, although I'm sure there'll be a lot of rumors flying around out there, the only reason why these changes were made, um, uh, was because of our need to ensure that we did everything we possibly can to make our students, our faculty, administration, and staff safe. Um, but again, I will say this. These walls, these schools, will not keep COVID out. Um, these are not complete safe havens. Uh, but we can do everything we possibly can because we will be in here together at longer periods of time than, we would, than you would anywhere else. So we need to take that into consideration. Um, I will also say that it's all according to what you do at home when we open up on the 8th, especially for those first few grade levels, um, keeping people socially distanced, keeping your children home if they're symptomatic, um, you know, you have to do your part as well. Again, uh, some of your, um, actions at home as either, you know, at your own work or whatever it is, um, with, with, with your families keeping people away from each other who may be symptomatic, that would will only trickle on into our building. So please, we need you to work on that with us as well, okay? Um, we are going to help with childcare the best we can, uh, meaning that if now this has kind of, you know, put a damper on you, our Champions program is going to be opening up extra, extra sections during the day to assist any individual parent who needs help. I'm sure some of that pricing will be reduced because of this emergency situation. Again, we were not expecting to do this until some of the recent CDC regulations just came through um, or recommendations just came through. Um, I will follow this up with an email to you so you have it with regards to some of those concerns. 
If you have any questions, please reach out to me, extension 1022, or your building principal. Please make sure you check your emails. You go online and you log in for some of the new um, the new things that we need to do with regards to um, forms and whatnot to fill out so you can get your schedules, okay? This has been a very crazy few weeks. Uh, we've been trying to do everything we possibly can to make sure that everyone was safe coming in. And I think this is the, unfortunately, the new plan, but the optimal plan for what we need right now, okay? So, again... My apologies if you're upset with the lateness of this. My apologies if you're upset that it's not um, immediate. But within the, within the first three weeks of school, um, three full weeks of school, we will have our entire population back um, and with a safe and fluid transition. So, again, um, I will keep you updated as we go. Thank you very much.